Hello, everyone. Dr. Victoria Skirbo here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. It's time for Tarascopes. We're doing the Tarascopes for the month of July for the sign of cancer. That's cancer sign, cancer moon, cancer rising. Before we get to the actual tarot part of the Tarascopes, we can talk about the astrology of um of July and how it affects the cancer. Of course, the sun is in cancer in July and we do have a full moon in Capricorn. Um, and of course, cancers are ruled by the moon. And so this is a real, um, a real point, I think, for the cancer to see what's possible and what may not be possible. And um, I think, uh, it's a good time to have a focused intention to see what you need to see and to act on it, right? Okay, so that's that's happening. Um, you are a moon rule sign, so that's one of the reasons why you're so, so changeable. Every two and a half days, the moon changes sign and you're influenced by that more than somebody who isn't a cancer. But of course, <laughs> It affects all of us. And, you know, we're all more sensitive in these Cancerian times. And we're concerned about our security and we're concerned about our family security. And uh, we want a safer, we want a safer world for everybody concerned, I think, especially women and children who seem to take the, you know, the if not the um the brunt of violence here in America, certainly all over the world. So Those are issues that could come in cancer this month. And then the sun moves into Leo, which is your house of values, your ability to express yourself. This is what I value. This is mine. This is this is what's important to me. And this is what I'm going to stand on or stand up for or work toward or whatever it is that you, whatever area that you're in, um, whatever that happens to be. But it is a time of fruition. And it can be a sign of fruition around relationships. You, a relationship may come to an end or a relationship can take the next step. So um, Venus is in Leo, so in your second house. And it's been in, uh, it's moved almost, it'll move almost to the end of Leo, the 29th degree of Leo on uh, the 22nd of July, and it'll turn uh, retrograde. So. It turns retrograde on the same day the sun goes into Leo. And for cancer, that's your second house, as I said. So, uh, you know, more focus or more illumination around uh, resources and values and your resources and your resourcefulness as well. Um, Jupiter is in Taurus. So um, that's your house of friends. Um, so you can actually expand your, your, your friends. Of course, that's happening, um, generally this year because Jupiter is moving through, um, Taurus and will eventually conjoin Uranus in Taurus. So that will be definitely something to look forward to, but that's not now. We don't have to fret about that. We'll deal with it when we come to it because we're going to know a whole lot more when we get there. Believe me. All right. What else? Um, the nodes of the moon change. Yes, they have been in uh, Taurus, Scorpio, North Node Taurus, South Node Scorpio um, since January of 2021, I believe, or 2022. 2022. Um, when the North Node went into Taurus. The ruler of the North Node um, was Venus retrograding Capricorn. So this retrograde period now is going to be in Leo for Venus. And so you are going to have to rethink your finances, um, how you express yourself, improve upon your self-expression, perhaps make it more efficient, Make uh, so more people can hear you, whatever it is that you have to do. 
for that. Um, yeah, I think that's what I want to say. Oh, Pluto does square the nodes. So the, oh, and then the nodes move into uh, Aries and, um, and Libra. And so the axis of evolution is the axis of self and other. So in order to evolve, we need to relate to other people. We need to see how we relate. We need to see where we either um, give our power away or try to overpower um, and try to find balance in that and understand where it comes from. And, um, you know, if it's getting in your way, then it's time to, you know, evaluate it and do something about it or deal with it or get over it, whatever whatever it is that you need to deal with, get over or whatever applies to you. You know, at some point you just have to say, okay, well, that was long enough. You know what I mean? Oh, anyway. I kind of feel that way about Trump. Well, that was long enough. There's more to come with him though, so. <laughs> All right, that's it, astrological time over well that's that's all i can think about the top of my head so let's do card reading and i am going to use the i'm going to use the wildwood town it's the deck i brought to ireland with me and i only did one reading on myself which is odd because my girlfriend and i always read each other but, you know, she was so busy with her daughter's wedding and there were so many festivities. I mean, it's not like anyone was hanging around looking for something to do when you happen to have your tarot cards out. It was a lovely, lovely time. So these, although they didn't get really used except for my reading in Ireland, um, they do have the Irish energy on them now. And mm, I'll always remember that. All right. The homeland, Mother Ireland, the motherland, full of milk and butter, Guinness, <laughs> delicious bread. Ugh. All right. This is obviously a reading for cancer because every cancer out there completely understands where I'm coming from. <laughs> All right, let's see, where are we at, Cancer? Okay, we have the Queen of Arrows, which is the swan, the energy of the swan. This is an ability to sort of make things look easy. Sometimes you make things look too easy. <laughs> when you look at a swan, it's like they're gliding, like it's almost like magical. But if you were to look under the water, their feet would be paddling away. And so the real work isn't seen. And so is this, so is this energy. The real work isn't always seen. So you make it look easy is, I guess, a little bit of a of a blessing and a curse. <laughs> um, what ch what challenge is that? Uh, an ability to focus that power, that energy, that all the work that you put in. How do you, it's time to focus it in a way that um, is going to is going to serve not just yourself, but the world. Underneath it all. We have the nine of bows, respect. This is about boundaries. The healthier the boundaries that you have, Cancer, the more respect you garner, Cancer, the more effective you can be. Sometimes you have to hold people accountable for what they do or what they don't do. It's usually what they don't do. Because most people don't want to overtly harm, but they sort of like the sin of omission thing that they used to talk about, <laughs> catechism. Oh, let's look at the past here. The ain't of stone, skill. You've worked really hard on your skill set. You're really good at what you do because you, first of all, love it and you practice it. 
Otherwise, why would you put your energy into it? You're trying to make it better each time. In the sky, we have the moon. It's, it's a crazy place out there. And the emotions are going to be very, very high, Cancer. Very high, very much up and down. You can't get caught in the in the uh, undertow of that. You have to, you know, just sort of go with the flow. Find a little boat that you can put your butt in, <laughs> and and just go with the flow. In your month, this card is the immediate future, so it's really the card for the month. Okay, well, uh, see and see, and you will be seen, and. This is illumination. You are your, and this is illuminating from your heart. People are seeing who you truly are. And they're seeing your light because you are unabashedly showing them your light. And that's good because that makes it better for all of us. So you're going to have to shine real bright this month, Cancer. Real bright. How it's seen from the outside. <laughs> We have the two bows, decision. You're on fire. <laughs> they see, they see, they see the fire. They see the fire. This is also a portal. This is, you know, you 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 commit to one side, you commit to the other side, then you have to walk through it and manifest it, right? So uh, you're on the verge. You've created, you've created the opportunity. The doorway is there. Now it's up to you to walk through it and shine your light. The domestic situation, the two of stones, it's called challenge. It's a challenge of balance. It's a challenge of, you know, maybe paying Peter to, um, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul and back and forth. And um, this energy of having to be quick on your feet and financially frugal to a certain extent. Um, but the opportunities are there. And as long as you stay spry and aware, I think you'll make it to the whatever the next month would be <laughs> domestically. <laughs> um, this is hopes and fears. Uh, the nine. Um, the hermit. There's a part of you that doesn't really want to come out of the hermitage that you've been in because it's safe. Um, but you still are required to shine the light um, in the day and in the night. Shine, shine your light. Outcome. Three of arrows, jealousy. This is the three of swords. Your heart's on fire. You might actually... Because of because of your success, you might actually draw some negative comments or negative or the slings and arrows, you know. Um, it's part of, you know, the, they can only wound you if the wound is there. So sometimes people poke the wound because we need to uh, remember that it's there and that it still needs healing. Let's see if we can get a major arcana. Uh, the journey, which is the death card, the change. So there's a change coming. There's a letting go this month, Cancer. And a new beginning on the other side of this, on the other side of the let go. It, it doesn't serve you anymore. You don't need it. Let's see what's underneath it. Relationship, new path, that's the fool. Going someplace you haven't gone before, doing something unusual. And the five of cups, which in this deck is ecstasy. This is sort of five is about raising the energy. It's about movement. And this is movement of emotions. There's a change in relationship for you. 
It could be a relationship to your partner. It could be a relationship to your own higher self. Um, it is a powerful um, energy. Somebody could be attracted to you or somebody could be attracted to somebody that you love. And so there is a, a danger of that. So be aware of that. Not what I usually say, but it's what I say. All right. I don't usually read like that, but that's what came up. You need to uh, have boundaries. Somebody's trying to like, there's an expression, uh, it's like own in on or zone in on something that's yours. You have the right to uh, pinch them in the nose with your pinchers. That's really what those cards say. And uh, you will, you'll protect what's yours, your family security. It, you, you make it look easy, like you don't care. But boy, when push comes to shove, that person better not be next to a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me now we're going to look at the spirit of the wheel I picked a spirit of the wheel oracle for everybody this month just to see you know everybody sort of gets the same flavor of oracle I just picked a new oracle just picked up a new oracle I'm excited to use it I'm not going to tell you what it is though but I'll use it soon so you can see soon enough. Oh, all right. Let's see. What do we have here? Mother Earth, creative feminine force, nurturing and birth, too. <coughs> Excuse me. Damn, I didn't bring my water up. Oops. Okay. Oh my goodness, it's so small. I definitely have to take my glasses off for this. I will hold this up for you. Is the art is beautiful as well. The prophecy. The Mother Earth card asks that you open yourself to feel the complete truth of your life. You must be willing to experience the painful as well as the joyful moments to fully emerge. Reaching that magical point of renewal allows the heart to expand toward the light. Through the expression of our emotions, we are able to tap into our true feminine nature and appreciate our connection to all living things. We learn to properly nurture ourselves and become caretakers that we are naturally meant to be. Open up and allow your heart room to grow. When we allow ourselves to give birth to our emotions, we learn to truly honor the creative feminine source within us. And your prayer is, I call upon the energies of Mother Earth to help me to accept and express my true feminine nature. I honor all beings with the gift of motherly compassion that is innate within me. Yes, sorry. And interesting, there's a full moon, right? Right at the beginning of the month for you, Cancer. That's the stories, morning glories. Uh-oh. It has to do with the lighting. During the day, this is less of an issue. So I get more light coming in. This, this way, it's not over my head. No, I'm sorry about the terrible camera stuff. It's just one of those, like, $60 camera, so it's not really a, been a high resolution or anything like that. Just like a plain old plain old. I think I get a little more savvy when it comes to the technology, I think. All right. Well, that's what I see. Have a great month. If you'd like a reading with me, you can uh, contact me at my website. There's the link below. Uh, if you'd like to become a patron, I have a Patreon page. You get things sooner than than the YouTube people. Um, and the more patrons that I can, uh, you know, the more patrons I get, the more I can offer. Um, 
and make it a, a more of a special a patron thing. I'm trying. I'm, I'm just anyway. <laughs> um, or just a like and a thumbs up. That's always good. Share it. I'm I'm almost at ten thousand subscribers, so it'd be great if I could have that for my birthday present. If you don't mind. Ah. Uh, all right, everyone, have yourself a great month. I'll see you again next month for the Tarascopes for Cancer for the month of August. But until then, feel the feels. Feeling is healing. And enjoy your family. Take care, everyone. Namaste.